monthly meme that never fucking stops. Oh, God. If I didn't feel sick before. I, I do now. Fucking the letter, dude. The fucking letter, man. Oh, man. For those of you that are uninitiated with this game, it's about chain letters. This is year three of not beating this game. Hopefully not. I hope to beat this fucking game. I don't know. It's year three of the goddamn letter. <coughs> Are we going back to the beginning? No! We're still trying to do one run. We're trying to do one run. It's like, I'll do I'll do a single run, dude. It'll be great. We'll, we'll do one. It's going to be such a good time. Yeah, we've, we've never gotten there. We've never gotten there. Every year, something has derailed us to the point that this doesn't happen. This this is the year. All right, I don't care that I'm sick. Today was a letter scheduled day. We are playing the goddamn letter. It's not because I want to play the letter. It's because we need to play the letter. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so today, we're playing the fucking letter. Sick man is getting through this. This year is the year. Um, Dixper is enabled. Feel free to make me suffer. I know that Trev did like... What was it? Last year he did like... 45 minutes of fucking Balloon Boy. And it like killed me. Uh, sick boys unite. Sick boys unite. Indeed, Swiss. Swick boys. Oh, that didn't, that didn't come off as good. I don't know. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Hello. Hello. Oh. I'm clearly not ready for this. Alright. Uh, this is a voiced video game. I wanted to smack that smile off his face. We're doing a heartbeat, but he isn't even my quiet. Last time on 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 this, um, what the fuck happened? <laughs> it was a year ago. I don't remember. You can't expect me to remember. Isn't there like a thing? They they were shopping for houses. Did you ever play the Wonderful One Hundred and One? I did. I did play the Wonderful One Hundred and One. That's a great game. Um. Okay, we we were in we were in the couple's line. They were buying a house. There's something weird going on though. Diplomacy has failed. Diplomacy almost fails. <laughs> Medication has failed us. Sick boys unite up! Oh my God! Diplomacy has failed. I remember that line now. Oh God, dang! Diplomacy has failed. Oh, we got a visit from Hannah. Oh, there wasn't anything after that. Did we kill Zack? I think I think we might have killed Zack. All right. I don't remember why we killed Zack, but we killed we killed Zack. I liked Zack. He was my favorite. Are we Marianne? No, we're Hannah. Oh, no, we're Marianne right now. Oh, we're the hot Scottish lady. Oh, it's coming back to me. Okay, we're the hot Scottish lady helping them get in houses. Okay, what was the last line? I want to smack that smile off his face. We're doing a heartbeat, even if he, wasn't, he isn't my client. But I can just see the headlines now. Interior designer sucker punches a rich asshole. I have no clue what's going on. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't either. I, I, I know that right now we are an interior decorator talking with a couple who are having a normal day, except for we banged the dude the night before, uh, and then we found out... Down memory lane. No, wait, yes, because we're doing that right now. We're, we're going through memory lane right now. I'm like, I'm explaining what happened. I think, I think that makes sense. So she, she banged the dude um, and then found out that they were her clients like the next day, because of course they did. So that's that's the plot, and he's a dick. He's he's a rude guy. Sometimes I wish 
I'll stop thinking whether something is worth the trouble or not. It just what do. What is with that look, Marianne? You look like you've smelled something foul. What? Don't you like the smell of pancakes? I think they're just wonderful. Like prayers answered by the breakfast gods. All right, Akechi. I usually prefer Calm it down. tarts. But pancakes are just as good. Is the game volume good? I don't, I don't even know. It's nothing. Oh, Never yeah, mind. no, that's fine. That's, that's good. Oh, auto. Auto, Come baby. Come on, then. We can discuss business over food. Yeah, let's go eat. Let's go eat with Akechi. There is no denying the clients when they invite me over to the table. Though it is too personal to share a meal in their home, it would look terribly rude to deny their invitation. Oh, thank lord. Besides, the pancakes did look and smell heavenly. Oh my god, are we playing Persona 5 again? A bowl of clotted cream, fruits, syrups, jams, and other spreads are laid out next to them, making for colorful arrangements. If this was brunch with friends, I would have gladly helped myself to the whole lot. I want, I want a whole bunch. But as it is, I accepted just a few pieces of pancakes and topped it off with lemon and sugar. Okay, real question. Lemon? Lemon? The duck extraction fills my question, yeah. Lemon? Why are you putting lemon on your pancake? What? Is that a thing? Have you guys, have you guys ever lemoned your pancakes? That's not a real thing, right? That sounds terrible. No? Okay. Just double checking the sanity in this old sick head, alright? Like, what? What? You know, That's I wasn't trying to be serious when I said I wanted a helipad. Lemon on pancakes sounds gross. I do not serious about the greenhouse, the vineyard, and the stables. Well, I do want those too. But I know you Hold on. Those. Does the skeleton have pancakes? What what am I on? What am I I, I feel like I'm on drugs today. It, it's probably cuz I literally am. They they gave me like cuz we went we went into the uh the, the doctor, or I'm going to say it's the doctor, uh, the other night, uh, because your boy wasn't breathing very easily, so they gave me, like, an inhaler that's a little bit of a stimulant, so it feels weird, um, it's kind of, it's kind of fun, because it opens up my lungs and stuff, as, as, as it should, because they're like, Remy, you're gonna get pneumonia, and I'm like, I don't want that again, uh, that was the worst, so, <laughs> that was their solution, smile, um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, but yeah. So I guess I, I guess I am on drugs. That was that was the full circle. Num have you had pneumonia? Is the worst, guys. If I get pneumonia again, I'm gonna be out for like three weeks. Uh, <laughs> I will not be functioning at all. Please God, anything but pneumonia. Uh, I'll let the couple You're talk. talking about interiors here, honey. You don't handle exterior designs and. Whatever handles this, it's a project uh. to you, Marianne. I'm able, actually, and willing to take a project of that nature. I was an architect in Ireland before. Of course, that's another contract entirely. I also suggest we finish the house ah, gotcha. itself before working on any additions to the rest of the property. There won't be any problems about ownership this time, will there? Pardon if I'm crossing a line, but the acquisition was rather quick. Oh, don't you worry. We've got everything sorted this time around. Inhaler life. I've talked to Miss Cooper and Mr. John from BRC, oh, as well as the old owners. Everything has been paid in full, and all we're waiting for is the paperwork from the land registry. They're letting us move in as soon as we please. It's not like they were living there in the first place. That's good to hear. The problems that could arise from renovating another person's home would be... Well, let's not dwell on it. First off, we'll want to know how you want the place to look. It's pretty furnished as is, but I understand if you want to modernize the whole thing. Actually, I'd prefer to keep the place looking as it is. But at the same time, I want modern appliances. I'm a modern appliance. Down the Ludgate's Christchurch summer residence. I do remember there being an oven I thought was a simple drawer before. Make them look vintage, antique, blend in with the rest of the decor. Customize appliances then. 
I can't find someone for that, and if you can't tell me what she specifically wants, Holy plot, Christ. I process. forgot this is how this is. We're talking about electronic appliance manufacturers. I love this game, but sometimes the dialogue just drags on because I do not give a shit about interior design, so chat. is next on our agenda? This is not The Sims. The I don't get choices in what I'm doing. In the past All right. Do not have us this involved. I stop. What sort of half-baked designer did that? If I knew who they were, I would have words. Words. This isn't time or place for it. However, I instead I use this brief pause to pull out the floor plans I'd brought with me. We'll have to figure out what you want to do with the rooms. Here, we can have a quick run through. <laughs> what is that little room next to the master's bedroom? Oh, as far as I could tell when I saw it, it's a second bedroom of sorts. Used, apparently, for the ladies in waiting who has served Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. Which is Sharon Ermen Garden Raden Raden. Well, we're not stuffing game, your dude. horns in there. He won't fit. You don't suppose we could turn it into a I can't believe we're doing this room. again. I love fashion. Oh, hi, Trev. But do we really need to turn an entire room into a walk-in closet, dear? We'll have large yeah. closets and a wardrobe in the bedroom already. Th this is, the they're literally planning like the closet. Sims. Well, what do you suggest we do with it? I thought a utility room of some sort would be nice. A craft room where I can do fun things. Or maybe a children's room might be nice. Oh, it's so creepy. You know, Bell did such a good job. Oh my or fucking god. Uh, I hate it. One, you are not inviting that witch. And two, there's a whole mansion for Kylie to play in. We don't need a children's room. And you don't even do Hello. arts and crafts. I'd like to turn the guest's room and the study into my personal office, by the way, if you don't mind. You Giving you guys balloon boy power was a mistake. I can have my utility room. It's just the one room of the many. I'm taking that room for myself, no matter what you say, dearie. So you might as well take this deal. You're always out doing business anyway. The real problem is the theater. Whatever are we going to do with all that space? Fine. We could turn it into our own personal cinema, I suppose. Might as well have it if you plan on not having a telly in the parlor. Yes, well, I don't want guests to be glued to the telly when they come over for a meal and some tea. By the looks of things, we can oh keep God. the rooms as what they are on the ground floor, though. It just the ballroom keeps would be fucking going. For parties. Do we really need a dining hall, though? I know this is I Mary Ann's act, and this is kind of her whole garage. thing, but I think I'm remembering why we stopped. You can park your cars outside. I think I was losing my mind in this that arc. Room, right there, in the northwest corner. That's sleeping quarters for the household help? Oh, that is perfect! Johans will be glad if we have other staff members who stayed in. It'd be convenient so they don't have to make the trip from Luxborn to the mansion when they're needed. You'll definitely need a lot more people to maintain a property of this size. The mansion yeah, is keep, really keep it interesting for me, chat. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Rooms. Thank you, Dixper. I didn't even know there was a music room next to the parlor because of what happened. There was a grand piano in there, too, when we checked during the tour. Did you hear that, Luke? Oh! Maybe you can take up playing the piano again. Oh, you should have seen it. It shifted, and I forgot again. it would do that. Sorry, what? He'd sing too, and I dance, and it was just. Mr. Wright played the piano. I can't imagine it. Hey, just in time for me to actually do the dialogue piece. But the honest way in which Miss Wright said so told otherwise. Oh, look, he's blushing. Anyway, what do you think of these plans, Marianne? Are we not even going to consider one of my requests? <clears throat> not even just a closet or just a garage? Now, that isn't fair, is it? You're not the only one who's going to be living here. I hardly see how that's unfair. I told you you're getting your office and your theater, the greenhouse, the vineyard, and the stables. That sounds fair, does it not, Marianne? Oh, fuck, that's a choice. Um. he He's getting a lot of shit. He's getting a lot of shit. How, how's my relationship with these people? Hannah likes me, and he's a dick. All right, yeah, that sounds fair. Miss Wright has her points, though. I really don't want to put it into the spat of a husband and wife. Yeah, he, he hates me even more. Good. But with the way these two were looking at me to settle this, I might as well 
keep to the facts instead of giving an Mr. opinion. Mr. Wright, your plan isn't quite feasible from an architectural perspective. I'm not even sure how much we can do without closer inspection. Well, the one about the garage, at least. A walk-in closet is easy enough, but the garage? See, a garage isn't architecturally feasible, and it isn't going to be financially sound as well. We're already going to spend a lot on your other requests. You have several acres of land to park on already. What? Did you calculate that on the fly? Financially sound my foot. You're probably just thinking up of imaginary numbers. Imaginary Might numbers I are confusing. I remind you that I was a financial manager. I also looked over and approved the expenses of our other houses. I know the rough cost of these things by now, love. Masters in business administration, major in accounting. Oh! Sometimes I think you forget that I'm not as dumb as I act. Paimon, fuck off! She hit, she hit random buttons. That catches my attention more than anything. It sounds more unbelievable than Whiskey playing the piano. She really didn't seem like the type. Wow. Business administration and accounting? What university? Lux spawn you, of course. Go Lux Dragons. Red and gold. Excuse Hello. me. How about we move Hi. on this chit chat ahead and do whatever Hi. else needs to be done sometime Hi. today? I had to cancel my appointments Hi. for this, you know. We might as well do a proper inspection with the designer this time, just to get it out of the way. Yes, no time like the present. No time you like want a thorough present. inspection? <laughs> Might as well do it now. We actually took another look at the property yesterday, though it was brief. But I'm sure you would want to see it yourself. To spot anything we might have missed. Please. It's not like I have much of a choice, do I? But I, I'm feeling free. Remember this? Remember what? Riding to the Omegod Mansion in the rice is an awkward affair. Not only am I worried about scuffing the expensive leather seats, but I'm also worried about getting in the middle of another cup of spat. This. What is this? What is this? this. What does this mean? With the tension thick in the air, I can feel them starting at each other at any time. I don't understand. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> Up until Mr. Wright tells the valet to turn the damn radio off. Remy cracks knuckles. Wait, no. And for a moment, I think he might start. No! But instead, he just stays quiet, and so the rest was. No! At the end, the sufferable silence stays. See, the silence stays! The silence stays! The game said it! I've never been so happy to see a house. Stepping out of the car and up to the mansion, but the finally end of the uncomfortable ride, I can finally take a deep breath of fresh air! The beauty of the place never fails to make me gaze and wonder every time I see it as well. Oh, Miss Wright moves to the front door, keys in hand, and I can already hear Mr. Wright plotting. XD. All right, here, Hans. We're going to go in. Oh my God, Trev! Oh my God! No! no! Go and see where we can put that vineyard and the other things this we talked about. This isn't needed. We want to know where the station security is well, so go around the perimeter and figure it out. Scouts a property and circles a perimeter oh, on fuck. foot. You do know this is 46 acres of land, sir. Well, you are not driving a car over the grass. Put those long spidery legs of yours to good use. I didn't hire you to stand around and look intimidating. Oh my god. Go, mush. Someday I'd like to ask how Johannes can even stand and tolerate them. I mean, he's got to get paid a lot. They're just getting... They just keep coming. Why doesn't he quit? Certainly the pay can't be that good! I'm not going to be able to hear myself past Balloon Boy, am I? Even I'm a bit put off by our mutual employer, and the only thing that keeps me from bailing is the fact we've already signed a contract. Huh? <laughs> At least I'll be working with them during the duration of the project. He works with them every day. Sometimes I think you hired me to make me suffer for your amusement. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they keep coming. Thanks for the support. It's just Balloon Boy Remy streams, right? I can I can just move him. Oh, oh that's the wrong thing. Uh-oh. I'm just gonna move him right, right here. Chat. He's gonna, he's gonna be right over. 
over 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 me. <laughs> this is this is where you really want him. Where you really wanted the attention. Yep. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Um. This wretched sunlight is far too alien and rare. <laughs> I can't even think. I can't even think right now. All I can hear is Balloon Boy. There's a bit of a problem with the missus not knowing which key it was. The first item on the engine would be the Grand Staircase. It seems sturdy during the open house, but closer inspection might say otherwise. No of these marks of damage, nor wear and tear. Probably rethreaded during the renovation. Peeking under the green carpet, the wood is properly installed. With bar placed down to prevent cupping. The carpet itself could use a vacuum now. Structural conditions from which I can see without actually dismantling the thing look to be in good shape. And the handrails are the support for the firm. Oh my fucking god! The work on it should be commended. <laughs> I can't look at the rest of the fire, however, because Mr. Wright starts to hurry us into checking the dining hall. So, what do you think? Oh. Certainly, we can't turn this area into a Free of reading, not free of balloon boy, though. I'd say these would be Jacobian. buttresses, but you never really know. They really liked mixing up these elements. You could oh say it was God. pretty avant garde at the time. Oh, well, it's avant garde, all right. If we're not careful. And in layman's terms, oh my God, mansion! Here, it's we just could risk keep great going. damage to the house if this we try is, to turn the dining ending. hall into a garage. This is a personal hell. The man doesn't look too pleased at this. Ha ha ha! <laughs> it's a look of disappointment before he sighs and looks around the place with an air of defeat. Good. Feel miserable. When he moves to speak, I dread another unreasonable demand again. Ha 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 ha! This will stay a dining hall then. <laughs> But if I may have another request instead, uh -huh. at least spruce the place up with some flowers, some plants, or something. I feel so old and dead in here. I Not feel that. unreasonable. <laughs> I'm old and dead. Must I presume? Anybody else see that? I just went Sonic for a second there. Of course. And I want a garden full of them. The now bot can't you keep up a trap? Like oh, it will for like house. the next hour. I'll just be around here downstairs if anybody needs me. That's what it did last time. It was like over an hour of hee 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 we always have a vase full of them in every house we own. I mean the bot that hits Somewhere, the up button. Oh. I'd like to think. Okay, I'm they done. Oh wow. Thank you for all that support. Never talks about her. Life's easier now. I don't even know her name. It'll end real quick though. He likes to flatter, claim that they remind him of me, but he's always loved the flowers even before we married. It's only like 30 minutes, I think, which is great. I'm freaking 30. Uh oh. Okay. Much at the piano, I didn't take him for a person who liked flowers. Daffodils, least of all. What's next? Am I going to find out that Mr. Wright saves kittens from burning I'll buildings? I'll go and snoop about upstairs. I thought you were done. You said you were done. You said you were you done! Do whatever it is that you have to do. When she goes without even asking if I need her here, I'm left standing to stare at the walls. Uh... Really, I don't need to do a thorough inspection of the building itself. It isn't part of the interior's job. But the architect in me is committed to doing his task in every project. If I'm going to make a living space that have both form and function, I might as well make sure the entirety of it is safe for my clients. Since I'm already here, I'd roam around the dining hall to check out my punch list, if you will. And when it's time to move on, I hesitate. Mr. Wright said he would be somewhere around here on the ground floor. I really don't want to be alone with whiskey. <laughs> I had to look through the place eventually, though. Uh, but on the other hand, I could do it later when he's gone. So I go upstairs first if I want to. Which floor do I go to first? I'm going to do the ground floor. It's, it's my job. Just because I'm a whiny butt. All right. Just because one trouble some client that I banged doesn't mean I should let him get the way out of my work. The parlor is my first destination. Mostly because... Oh, my God. There's so much reading. Because I figure Mr. Wright is hiding down in the lawn cellar making plans there. I'm going to bump into him sooner or later, but I'd rather make it later. Much, much later. The place upon a close inspection is in good shape. And I don't doubt this place was done with the most care, considering it would be the first room's visitors would see during the open house. 
There's a stain on the carpet. Most likely one of the guests at the time. But it isn't anything a good carpet cleaning can't get rid of. Next is the music room. Or at least that's the plan. Locked. Oh, come on now. <sighs> I rattled the doorknob again harder this time to double check and even give it a good budge to see if there's a problem with the door itself. Is there, is there a problem with the door itself? Is, is there a problem? Oh my god, they keep going. No, definitely locked. That's weird considering the rest of the rooms aren't. Is he in the music? It could just be this one, and I could try the door to the ballroom if I really want to get in. And that's when I hear it. The sound of a piano. Though it plays one note over and over again. Makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and I back away from the door. Though I wasn't exactly the superstitious sort, what am I going to do? The room is locked. I can go back to it later. Maybe if I can see through the ballroom and... The music room door opens, but who else but Luke Wright stands by the doorway. He looks like a cat that ate a canary, and I don't appreciate the way his eyes lingers on me. Lingerdingers. Isn't it common sense that locked doors mean someone wants a bit of privacy? You didn't try to break the door down. Why did you just want to see me again that badly without the missus? I'm still up for a shag, if that's what you're after. Pretty sure the wine cellar is soundproof if you fancy a snog and a poke. I'm here on business, Mr. Wright. Nothing more, <laughs> nothing less. Now, if you can let me pass, I need to inspect the music room as well. This is your stream now, true. I'm not looking for trouble, but trouble always seems to find me. Cause I knew you were trouble when you walked in. He leans against a door frame, crosses his arms, and plasters a huge grin on his face. The way you looked at me promises nothing good. Oh my god. But really, how big of a scumbag can one person be? <laughs> this oh, remain. sure, you're some no. fancy interior designer. But mix in some booze and you really loose it up, don't you? Working woman by day, working girl by night. Damn, that's I'm rude. Not. I know such thing. Don't you fucking dare continue down that line of thought. I'm not what you suggest I am. I am not some whore you can just leer at and proposition. If anybody here is morally reprehensible, it's you cheating on your wife. And if you don't stop this harassment, I'll- Tell the wife? <laughs> Good luck with that. You're terribly confident for a lecherous cheat. Do you honestly think you're the first woman that threatens to go running to her <laughs> claiming something or another about me? You think you're some special snowflake, and that you're the first woman that I've slept with? Yikers. My hands shake. I had to remind myself I would get nothing out of hitting him. Oh, I think you're breaking the record. I, I think you're doing that. Nothing but satisfaction, at least. Tell her. But who will she believe? Her darling husband? Or the hired help? The hired help, for sure. Oh, buttercup. She's probably trying to make us pay up, or she'll create a scandal. Stay quiet, you can go on with your life with no trouble. And if I talk? Even if your wife doesn't believe me, I can get people talking. What then? Oh, people gossip all the time. It's hardly anything new. But still, if you talk, I will ruin you. The way he says it promises it. It makes my blood run cold. Now, why don't you run along and do whatever silly job you have to do? You're Let's such just be a here dick. In the music room if you change your mind about a shag. Fucking asshole. Scum of the earth he is. How could you just let him talk to you like that? Okay. So, forget about going into the music room then. That's fine. He'll have to go out there sooner or later. <laughs> In the meantime, I can go around and check the rest of the house. Okay. Rapid clicks. All my worries fade when I step in the ballroom. And, well, the whole place is just grand, isn't it? I see one of the rights made sure nobody else to take this place from them. Anyone who has it will certainly be the bell of the ball. It's pretty much one great big status symbol. 
I don't think I can do much of a thorough inspection in this room, so I note down it all for later. Moving out of the kitchens, I checked the ventilation and the general fire safety in the kitchen. This is a bit important. He's laughing at you, not with you. Oh. 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 Um. Fire safety. I would, of course, suggest bringing an actual fire safety inspector over for more detailed inspection. Wouldn't do to see such beautiful architecture go up in flames, after all. I took measurements of the countertops and cabinets, note down what type of wood they used. They wanted some of these recreated to hide modern appliances. There's a loose floorboard in the farthest corner and some other head scratches, but everything else seems not fucking good! My concentration is broken you with some You can come else. in. Door's not locked. Oh, wait. Expecting Mr. Wright or the butler to come in. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, all right. I'm coming. Just hold on. I, I love that Mr. Balloon Boy is just constant in the background. When I moved to open the door, well, I realized something. It's not the door, is it? It's not from the door, but from somewhere else. The trap door? I paused for a second waiting. But the knocking has not ceased. XD, BRB. As soon as it becomes desperate, the dull thud comes before switching to what seems to be scratching. Desperate and insistent at once, as if grasping for respite. Is somebody stuck down the- <gasps> Dick! A kitty! Where did that come from? How did it even get down there? That put my heart crossway in me, it did. I love cats, but they have no business giving people a fright. For a second there, all these ghastly rumors about the place have come flooding back. Now appearing in the darkness of the open trap door gets me thinking. Gets me curious. Seriously, though. I should really make sure there aren't more surprises from down under. I don't think the rights would appreciate it. We found a litter of kittens making a litter of kittens making a house in the wine cellar. Okay. Going down the flight of stairs while wearing high heels is always a bad idea. Descending in dark underground made it worst. But I managed anyhow without any major slip ups. These stairs need work, that's for sure. Yeah. Surprisingly the well cellar the wine cellar is in good condition. No water damage from last year's flooding, and apart from the dust and cobwebs that have accumulated, the place will likely hold for several more years. <sighs> Racks and barrels line the walls, making the spacious room look smaller than it is. I'm no expert, but it looks good enough for immediate use without further actions. Or additions. Words. Bloody Whiskey will be having a field day. I think so, anyway, until I feel something crunch beneath my feet. <laughs> Whatever few bottles were left behind here are now nothing but glass beneath my heels. The cat's fault, I'd wager. And it made a downright mess, with the red slick pooling from the remnant of a good drink. There's a lot of stuff to have. Just been a few bottles, though. Whole trail of it flows from the end of the room, and I fall, fully <laughs> expecting a leaking barrel or a whole upturned rack. Instead, it just keeps going and stops at a very large puddle in the back, on the very back wall. Blah, blah, blah. What a waste of wine. Why is it so sticky, though? Ugh. It's thick, too. Nothing like wine. Of course, it could just be mold. Maybe it's not wine. Go on, touch it. I dare you. Who the fuck are you? Despite it all, I find myself answering. Because it's her voice. Amy Lorraine. Lovely Amy. Pretty Amy. Huh? I can't imagine her standing there with me, laughing and pestering me as I did my work in the way only friends can. She was my friend, the only one I had at St. Samthans. <laughs> Samthans. I was a scholar, the charity case, in a school for privileged and prestigious young. Hold on. Did my test screen just shit the bed again? 
Chat, do I exist for you? Yes, yes. Okay, my test screen's dead. Refreshed and now you don't. I love all of this so much. All right. Great times. Where's OBS to hit the stop button? Are we good? Are we good, streaming platform? good do we live again <laughs> are we live live yes no maybe so <laughs> i fucking love this yes you can blame it all on me I want you guys to know that um, <laughs> e even though I was freed from stream for a moment, uh, the balloon boy did not stop. He just doesn't end. He just he just keeps going. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. They looked down at me. If they cared to look at me or acknowledge my presence at all, all except for her. Forever balloon boy, for real though. Sometimes I wish for the good old days when we were friends. Now, now she's nothing but a ghost. I, though I try so hard to get over, her. I really, really do. What am I? Five years old? Oh, damn it! Uh, Stuck under my shoe. I double dare you. Uh, Hell, I double dog dare you. Don't be such a scary cat. It's probably wine. What else could it be? Probably wine. Blood? Don't be ridiculous. Why would there be blood down here? Why would there be blood down here? If I was the joking sort, I would have said that it might be the reason why the previous owner sold the place. <laughs> like a five-year-old today. Maybe the ghost stories were actually true. They wanted to get away from the walls that dripped of ectoplasmic goo. Or and whatever other ghosts haunted about. <laughs> Doubt it. I can hardly believe in any of that voodoo nonsense as it is. But I stared at the mess of my feet, probably looking like a fool while I'm at it. I noticed something strange. It is invisible, unless one is really paying attention. But I can see the red gunk seeping through the crack What's in the wall. What's this, then? I worry about the structural damage and the damage to the foundation. I worry about the wine cellar, as the wrong conditions can lead to deteriorations of its contents. If temperatures and humidity are not controlled. Up until I see how clean the crack is. It runs along the very edge of the wall, vertically along it. Where a door would be. Pressing my hand against the wall leads credence to an idea as I feel where it would give way. Ooh! Could it be an adventure, then? A secret passage? There must be a hidden switch somewhere. <laughs> oh, look! This is the most interesting thing you've done by far! She keeps going. There's a hidden room here that could certainly explain the discrepancy in the mansion's floor plans. 
wouldn't be too far fetched to think that there could be hidden rooms and passageways all over the house if that were to, if the were to follow that logic. Words. And boy, isn't that exciting! Some this feels like something straight out of a game. I'm so glad we broke the third wall for that. Suddenly, she touches my arm, and I flinch away in shock. That. That shouldn't be possible. I understand the auditory hallucinations, maybe even visual hallucinations. But that was... You look surprised. What's wrong? You? That, that's not possible. You're... Dead. Aren't you happy to see a dear old friend, though? I'm hurt, I am. What the hell is going on here? Oh, isn't it obvious? I've come back for you so that we can be together again. When she touches me once more, I recoil. What does she mean, together again? She's dead. <laughs> no, leave me alone. Leave you alone? But I just got here. Turning around, I met with the rights butler, who just looks at me with an indifferent look. <laughs> and when I look back, Lorraine is gone. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't talking to you, just thinking aloud is all. You should really avoid talking to yourself, Kint. Do more of that and others will think you're insane. <laughs> yes, thank you. Is that all you're here for, or has your master sent you running down oh, here for something? Love him. Oh, no, I am just down here to admire the place. I've not been inside before. I thought I would look around before we return to the city. The car is already running, you see, and I suggest you go back to the foyer, unless you wish to be left behind. It seems you are in good company already, after all, with this house and your imaginary friend. Wait, we're leaving already? But I haven't finished. Who's to say she isn't insane? She clearly is. These, These conversations are normal for her. Is what it, she made it seem like. Wishes to go home. We are all subject to his whims, lest he throw a tantrum. Can't help but smile at that. He's a strange guy. I still can't imagine how he can work for a guy like Luke Wright, though. I mean, the blonde arse ain't an easy guy to get along with. Whatever the butler was having to tolerate, I want ten of it. Yeah. And we wouldn't so want any soiled knickers or spilled milk. Why don't you go head on? And I want to be him right when there. I grow up, chat. Very well. Uh, do be careful on your way back. I saw some broken glass on the way, and it would not do to cut your Stop it. on them. Oh my god. Save. I will, yeah. Just tell Mr. Ride not to blow a gasket or anything. I'll be just a minute. Speaking of blowing gaskets, there's something else dangerous here. Whatever's behind that door, it could pose some problems. Best case scenario, I'd only ruin good stocks of wine. But who knows what else is behind that false wall? I'll have to come back to it. You should mention it to anyone else. Buddy, you're supposed to be on lockdown. I love this Vanessa, one so much. He told me that the life of my dreams would be promised and someday be mine. Um... It's already dark as we make our way out of the mansion. With no lights, we are only illuminated by the headlamps of the Wright's car and the stars above us. The sight of them helps me compose myself more than several minutes of being alone did. <laughs> the car's engine is running it. Two still stand out on the lawn. Miss Wright is busy, eyes up to the stars, and Mr. Wright, arms crossed, has his eyes down to the ground. Freddy, you're supposed to be on lockdown. Um, there's no way I can read that. Oh, perfect. Oh, hush, dear. I'm sure she has her reasons. Mary Anderson's seen the sort to idle. Sorry, I was just checking on something important. See, business is business and they take time, love. You should know that better than anyone. So, Marianne, what do you think? Are you the woman for the job? 
I know we already signed papers hiring you, but I want to be 100% <laughs> sure that you are committed. Goods back towards the mansion. Knowing what I had seen there. That curious thing in the wine cellar, which is the stuff you don't read from fucking horror stories. <laughs> and her. I should feel the slightest bit hesitant. I was lucky. I have seen enough films to know what happens when a promiscuous woman enters a haunted house. Hey, look. It's all about those fucking pancakes. Did they just die again? Bro. Told me that the life of my dream could be fine and he seemed to be mine. Are we live again? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it keeps dying. Caffeine, please. I just, I just want to play my horror video game. <laughs> why, why does this make them brighter? Oh. Wait, wait, yes, we're dead, or yes, we're back? <laughs> uh, this is my chance to turn down and make excuses and not up to task. And I need to take care of my old sick father. There's a transition. <laughs> Just pay the fine, which is probably outrageous for a contract like this, and let it go. I should turn it down. But for some obstinate reason, I can't. In the same manner I haven't let her go. The regret that has shadowed me since that day. Much as I hate to admit it, even to myself, seeing her again, a mischievous glint in her eyes, the loose tendrils of her hair curled around her forehead. Okay. Something I've missed terribly, and now that it's here, almost within an arm's reach, I... My father would tell me, sometimes you simply have to go through with it. Consequences be damned. <laughs> and, well, I really have and uh, don't have any logical reason to say no. At least not something like a client like the Wrights would want to hear from a professional designer. <laughs> it's certainly an interesting project. You can be sure I'm seeing it through Did the Did all end. that happen while we were just like standing Such here looking at them? Oh, I do That's love a lot the of thoughts for like staring at her. You were always determined like that, weren't you? Hearing her voice once again she'll sends a chill running down my back. I can't wait for this day to be over. <laughs> From the mansion and through Anselm, I rode with them in silence. But as soon as he hit the city proper, I asked to be dropped off and bid them good night. I thought it'd be best if I didn't stay too long and could find spaces with either Miss or Mr. Wright. Wow! Both seemed to cause me serious trouble, and if the project had been any less interesting or grand, I would have dropped it without a second thought. Would have, should have, won't. Uh, I assure them that my place isn't far off and I have to fight off the urge to roll my eyes and groan. Whiskey throws me a little smirk.
But even in my own home, peace is elusive as it sleep. I lie awake thinking of what I saw in the mansion. Okay, now we're chat. Am I alive? <laughs> of who I saw. If I much as hear a single whisper from her. Yes? Okay. If I so much see is a wisp of her hair. At least for me. Okay. I am afraid I'll go mad. But none of that happens. And it makes me feel hollow. Refresh your good? Okay. For two nights, I've had trouble sleeping. But it's this only one morning. Now. He's right. It is my stream now. Are we live? Or is it Balloon Boy? I don't know anymore. In my restless dreams, I see that mirror. <laughs> the one in the study. And in it, I see her. I see them. <laughs> Lorraine and Hannah. Hannah and Lorraine. Poor pathetic Marianne. Work, work, work. She'll work herself to death. <laughs> See? See? She doesn't listen. Uh, That's all she do. Look at what happened to me. Uh, they talk amongst themselves with cruel smiles and venomous tongues. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> they run to themselves. Two heads, one body. Why is she still hot? Oh no! A horrible mockery these women as though they, they were one and the same emotional damage the emotional life goes on and goes out and she doesn't even see it do you think she'll even realize when she's kicked the book at herself when they say a person has a hard time telling when they're in a dream it was true often enough even with this bizarre sight the obvious implication that this isn't real. I can't help but feel depressed. Freddy, oh, no, she's hot. To be on Likely. Vanessa, he told Is that me that the light she of might just my dream would be promised Quill to someone. Well, <clears> throat> 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 she's alive and I'm mine. Well, um, they sp though they speak in each other's ear, tones low and hushed. I can still hear them as clear as day. Their whispers pervade the air, heavy and oppressive. You know, I gotta, I gotta pause it for like a second. There's something about this that really bugs me. Like right here, there's like a weird like smear kind of thing. And for some reason it was like, am, do I have like dead, dead like screen pixels? And now, now that you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Um, but yeah, there's like randomly just like a block right here. That's just kind of like, why is this here? Why is this like this? And I, I don't have a good answer. But I keep, I can't like not focus on it. It's like all I can focus on. There's like this two-headed naked scary lady. And all I can focus is, is that dead pixels on my screen? They bury and dig into my head like tiny maggots worming their way into my skull. It is only then that they take notice of my presence. Eyes turn towards me and I can feel small under their scrutiny. Caricature smiles etched on their face, mimicking each other grotesquely. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Come join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Then there'll be a Unless hot, thrill-headed lady. Have you been looking at us? Spying? How so scandalous. Weird. Such a naughty girl. I'm sure you were just waiting for something rude to happen, weren't you? You know she will not admit it. She thinks it wrong. You've said it so yourself. Oh. Yes. She thought me wrong, impure, abnormal, because I loved her. Oh, it's one of those plots. Got it. My breath hitches and I open my mouth to... I thought that was dick spray.
The mirror that holds them cracks lines spidering across the Do surface. Not lie. We know the gluttonous thoughts you try to deny, girl. I think All this is a dream. Desires you bury beneath that sickening guilt. You act the martyr when you turn the bed you lie in into your own hedonistic hell. You are nothing but a tainted soul with filth stained flesh held together by falsehood and pride. That's a big insult. They look livid. And when it looks like they would lunge. <gasps> I wake, feeling like the wind had been knocked out of me. I was gonna say, we're lunging into it, Chad. We're lunging into it. And that's the safe end. With a groan, I squint and find a certain fluffball sitting on my chest, looking as pleased as Punch. Do we get to see the kitty? Do we, do we get to see the kitty? Oh, she's the overlady of the cats. Queen of despair and destruction of nice furniture. Yes. Though I can't stay mad at her majesty because it feels like she did something good this time. I was having a nightmare, but I can't remember what it was about. I'm trying to recall leaves a pit in my stomach. The cats, the demons all along. Yes. Maybe it's probably better than I don't remember. Good morning, Barothio. Who's the good kitty? Barothio. Are you hungry? Is that why you woke me up? That's a good choice. A content perk comes from my sweet dear before she jumps off the bed and oh, trots towards the man. kitchen. Oh, they did end. Oh my god, I can think. She seemed to absorb this for a minute. Like, oh my god. Ah! Um, yes. On the other hand, it takes me a bit more before I roll out of bed and start my day. Yes, I can. I can think. I can think. Mornings before we work is always a quiet affair. Shower first, then mug of coffee and bowl of oats. Sometimes I do stretches, and I always check my work email. The rights will be moving into the mansion today. I don't even think the paperwork is officially done, but it isn't too far-fetched to think they're allowing them to start the move despite that. Rich people like them always find a way to get what they want. I'll be leaving all. you again today, Beth. So you behave and make sure not to shred up my new covers, okay? And don't worry, She's I didn't forget tomorrow is Black Cat Day, so I'll throw you a party. But only if you behave like a proper lady. Alright, Chad, I have a big worry, right? Um, my worry is not for Marianne, alright? My worry is that if Marianne <laughs> dies, right, that Beth doesn't have someone to take care of her and she's gonna die too. Yeah. Just, just real thoughts. So Marianne has to live now. Yeah. <laughs> Cats are better than people. Too bad I have to work with humans. The place is already busy as soon as I get there. Also, oh my god, no, not again. I mean, thanks for the support! The foreman, the one that I recommended the rights for his work ethic, is clearly as early as usual. He's already instructing men here, and they're with bigger loads. I have no chance to talk to him as Miss Wright appears and greets me with a smile. There's a joke there. I'm not making it about a foreman with big loads. This is right. I hope everything has been to your liking thus far. Good morning, Marianne. It has been delightful, and these men have been very helpful. Look at all this. <laughs> it's so busy here. I'm getting tired just looking at them go. No complications so far with the movers or the previous owners of the mansion, I hope? If anything, the only one being problematic is Luke, if I'm to be honest. He oh. can be such right. a diva, but I do like that about him. You're the only one. She stops looking at the upper landing where Master Wright comes through with two other movers in the mirror for the study. Oh, do be careful with that mirror. We wouldn't want anyone getting hurt because of broken glass. Why are you even having it carried around? Oh? Hmm, you did say you didn't want the mirror, and I... Hmm, keep getting distracted by it. If I'm going to turn the study into my office, I'd rather not have it there. Where can we put this? Well, you are not putting it in our room. Why don't you go, I don't know, put it in the wine cellar for now? We can figure out to full store it in the attic or somewhere else later, yes? You heard her, boys. To the cellar it goes. Mush. The movers bring down the mirror one step at a time, no matter how much the man tells them to hurry. An unsettling feeling grows in my stomach as I see her reflection in the bloody thing. <laughs> That's the mirror from my dream. 
Marianne, you didn't remember the dream. Miss Rightly shakes her head and laughs at her husband's antics to take the mirror out of here. That was a good one, chat. That was a well-timed clip. That was a good one. He's back at it again, as soon enough, pointing the men here and there and there and here and there and there and here and there. Oh, god damn it. I forget that does that. I'd say he's the man with the plan, but he sort of interferes with the layout and design that we've agreed upon before. I'm about to point it out, but... It's better you let him realize his mistakes on his own, rather than tell him of them. That way, you do not get blamed for his actions. It is more fun, too, to tell him... Ah... Uh, how does they say it? I told you so, once he slips up. Hmm. Been working with him long enough to know that, huh? It's not like a plan to make much, too much of a fuss unless he changes some... Unless what he changes is actually crucial. It happens often enough when one is made to accompany him nearly all hours of the day. <laughs> Up higher! Come on now! Still, he could be a less pushy about things. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one of a kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Surprising how hands on he is compared to my usual clientele. Well, both of them are, actually. It's refreshing to have them participate despite their initial reluctance. Luke, do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry, Buttercup. Careful, that's Emma Hot. No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. What's a Napoleon Abueva? No, you just tone down the dramatics a notch. Miss Wright and the butler look like they're used to it by now. But the rest of us, well. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. Got him. This is an, uh, there is an obvious sense of relief as Mr. Wright is dragged out of the room, leaving the movers to do their work in peace. I hope they break something immediately. Some grumbling even comes from some of the younger workers. Good thing the family butler isn't blindly loyal to his boss, or there would be trouble with Mr. Wright. <laughs> he is such a bratwurst. Whiny baby who never got enough hugs from his mooter. Probably lost in translation, and not that I'm condoning talking about someone else behind their back, but I think you meant to call <laughs> Mr. Wright a horrible brat. Hmm, well, he is that too. There are a lot of things I can call him, but I mean to say that he is a big weenie. A childish name for a childish person. Like it. a child, he whines when he doesn't get what he wants. I love he it. breaks the toys that he has. That gets a laugh for me, as well as a few of the movers who lingered near. He and I carry boxes instructing the movers where they should be and generally talking over Mr. Wright's work. New insult? Yeah. You're a bratwurst. <laughs> Goes off without a hitch, and the man is helpful, efficient, and capable of physical labor despite his clean cut appearance. <laughs> a gentleman to boot, taking boxes from me when he sees me struggling with them. Speaking of boxes. Hey, one of the boxes for the kitchen is missing. Has anyone seen it? The one with the pots and the knives. Ah, the knife box has gone missing. The Bratwurst had it brought upstairs, thinking it was for the attic. Why would he... Oh, never mind. I'll go get it. No, 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 no. Send someone else. Why even bring a box of pots and knives to the attics? That man is ridiculous. There's probably no point in making sense of what he does just because... Jesus Christ! Because he can... At least it turns out that I don't have to make all the way up to the attic. The mover probably on Mr. Wright's orders left the box in the stairs. That was scary, chat. That was scary. 
At least it's not that heavy. I managed to hoist it up without too much effort. But the time it takes me to do is long enough for me to overhear an odd conversation I could never in my life imagine coming from a couple like the rights. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loosey and you'll stop bringing cats home. And soon enough, one day you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things that spread up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. Oh, true. Dogs are infinitely superior, of course. But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. For one, so I have to agree with whiskey on this one. Though I can live with Miss Wright being a dog person. Well, dogs are better, chat. So, you know, she right. But as amusing as the conversation might get, I really shouldn't be caught eavesdropping or slacking off on the job. At most, I should get out of the way of possibly soundproofing certain rooms. Perhaps bringing it up if they don't realize the lack of it. I really should move on. No matter how bizarre their conversation might get, I really must go. That's not even a bizarre conversation. We're just going to walk on. Oh, they both they both like us for not eavesdropping. Even though they wouldn't know. Not to mention, just standing here when I have no more reason to loiter just feels wrong. Okay, can you... Besides, the magic word here is privacy. I respect that. Keep in mind, I would have a guilty conscience filling the brim with the secrets of the rich and famous in my hands. I'd take the stairs two steps at a time if I was in danger of getting stabbed by my baggage and nobody else was in the foyer. Okay. But Johannes takes the box from me. I only give him a small smile. Okay. There's no reason to gossip. Whether a person is a cat or a dog person has got to be the lamest fucking gossip I've ever heard Nine. in my life. I know you are a very skilled in architect, and I have seen your work. But this shall be my kitchen, and I shall fix it according to my wishes. Yeah? Kind of weird. Anyone would think that pots and knives are supposed to go anywhere but the kitchen, huh? I assume he's gotten them confused. It wouldn't be the first time. Confused? How does that even work? I understand covers, carpets, or even curtains getting mixed up. Hey, I'd even understand pots being mixed up with silver decor. But knives? Oh, he has a collection of ornamental ones from his father. It takes them everywhere he goes, wherever he moves. I guess that makes sense. A bit. Still odd. He merely shrugs before going back to work. The movers work effectively when they're left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. Have I broke a branch? I have. There was there was other branches here. So what what, what do you think this was like? Move on, okay. Pretty much everything up to standards. They skipped lunch entirely, not even realizing how many more lines do I have? I have Rebecca, Ashton, and Luke. Oh my god. Nevertheless, all is well. The butler gets heating up the leftover bubble and squeak from breakfast and make a generous batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely simple in comparison to whatever he serves the rights, but well done the That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? Spoil Star Wars, dude. It's an idle conversation more than anything. My thoughts, as they are, preoccupy me. If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Even my husband. And he's American. Hell yeah. I really do hate getting so up close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It's obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong when I can't help but think about what I heard when I learned about the right couple. Literally, it was cats and dogs. What a cat and dog person. Why is that your obsession? That wasn't even interesting. 
See some way of creeping up a person's thoughts, ideas, whether they're fact or fiction. I, I think Marianne's a fucking psycho, Chad. The creep of the fester crawl and writhe in a way that twists. You're giggling, delighted, and mocking. They creep up and... The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Don't! Half expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder. It's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being scared. Though like, you don't believe in the likes of spooks, being scared is not the top of my list. The things that Marianne liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach. Or he would have gotten on friendly terms or something like a rolling pin. <laughs> what was with that reaction? Were you really scared? <sighs> Has Johan's been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare I don't people. Ghost stories, Chad. Isn't also, that I can right, think brother again. Gurium. Life is great. The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights. Aside from vague amusement. Must have been something there, though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. Expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. He is a dick. Neither in the smoke, even as Johans leaves the room to serve the workers their late lunch. So, now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. Tosh. Nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. That's a boring way to look at it, but <laughs> that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. It would be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted are true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing a dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, means that there would be such things as ghosts and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. I don't know if ghosts and goblins are the same thing, though, right? On the hand, on the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. Hmm. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? Simple enough question on the surface, yet I notice this man stiffen up as the question leaves my mouth. Wouldn't have noticed it if I was watching his reaction intently, but his eyes, I see something dangerous. That depends on your definition of the word weird. Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. <laughs> Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. But these reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women lurking about then? The teenager would technically qualify as strange. Oh my god, it's so nice not to have balloon boy laughing anymore. But yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over very well. None that I know of, but I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything. Anyone suspicious and you report it <laughs> immediately. I think that goes without saying. Literally the opposite. The concern he have uh, the concern he have on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns if a bit subdued. 
Whatever smarmy remarks or innuendo he has at the ready never comes, though, as voices in the dining hall ring out. So, is this a full time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. Uh, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So, you can't really call it a full time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. That'd be the magazine photographer, I presume. As always, Mr. Wright talks in a kind of a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. Sounds like it's working on the photographer, too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least if his small scowl is anything to go by. Is he jealous? Um. I don't think we're close enough to be like, hey, you alright? How you doing? How you doing, honey bun? Um. Probably try and lighten the mood. This isn't a branch, right? No, my choice doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, I'll hey, ask if he's alright. Are you alright there, whiskey? You're looking like you need a serious drink. What is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing actually. I'm fine. Just a bit winded from all that moving about. It's been a long day. And the day's not over yet. So if you can excuse the bloodness, you either shape up to help or ship out back to your room and let us do the rest of the work. He hesitates. Eyes locked firmly on the door that led to the dining hall. Even now we can hear as Miss Wright and the photographer chit-chat in between shots. It's not in my place to say this, but she really does seem to care a lot about you, you know? There's no need to remind me of that. A strange smile appears on his face before he shuts his eyes and sighs. Sighs and eyes. <laughs> Tell the workers that you're all dismissed early. That's nice and all, whiskey. But we really shouldn't just take off. Delays aren't a good thing when it comes to big projects like these. The sooner we tackle certain issues, the better. And I trust you can take care of these issues another day. Don't make me ask again, Mint. Just tell the others they can go home <laughs> early. And to not worry, they'll still get paid the remaining I hours. I don't know what prompted this. Jarvis. What is up with you? Stop it. Stop it. Why are you barking? Jar Jar. No. Okay, I have to go let the crazy dog go do things really quick. I'll be right back, guys. Neat. Okay, crazy dog.
Jarvis can hear phone. Wait, not phone. Doorbells. He's such a smart dog. Dumb, though. My oh, baby. Yeah. With the air he's putting on, though, I know much better than the metal and prod further. Fine. Besides, you're the boss. Walking in the kitchen, I accept the fact that whatever he says will go while well, under his roof. I mean, hey, we're getting paid for it. Miss Rain, the photographer, is still too busy in conversation. Notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Said they didn't want to really well, fun. it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Foncy very much. Blue Foncy. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Her foyer has me stumbling upon the family butler once more, raising her brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bradverst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out of here. I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. My ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get here. Granted, there were some difficulties at first because the driver didn't know where the Ermengarde mansion was. He tried to have a hand over GPS coordinates for his smartphones or some other technical babble I didn't care about, but the butler didn't understand. Susan told him it's the haunted mansion over in Ansel Village. He knew just the place. And finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about that place giving him the willies. It gives me the willies too. I'd love him to snap it at him. But as soon as that occurs to me, another blossoms in the forefront of my mind. One has been bothering me greatly, more than my exasperation over whiskey and his project or wanting it all to stop. There's been no rain whispering in my ears today. Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn new lady of theater. Uh, loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. That I'd moved past this years ago. Does nothing but help me curb my frustration, if anything. It only ensures I want another stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays for karaoke and Wednesdays improv. Usually it's these four guys who do hilarious games. The one with the Irish drink songs are always a crowd favorite. Oh, I love a good laugh. Stand-up comedy isn't my thing. And without Cam or Haruna or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And there's several bottles of beer in front of me. I get really embarrassed. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! I need you for something! It's a good thing the bartender is a nice fellow. It's probably been kicked out of other places by now, or worse. Push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and shake of his head, even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him in here a couple times. Though he never talks to anyone except G. The girls used to all be over him, too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. All right, all right. What is it? Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, pour the wine. Nice. Uh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. A wine comes back, comes to the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hopes of getting them back once they're behind the counter. Even in my drunken mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because of what little sense I have uh, left, knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed in wresting a bottle from a sober man. Doesn't stop me from trying to reach out my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head like I knew he would before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? How you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one else to chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep right there in the bar and then. Now we're just stand up and try and trick back same home. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. Illuminati! So, what have you got for me this time, G? Illuminati. Anything good? Slow down there. Illuminati. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? 
Their talk would have had me interested, would have kept my attention if I gave a damn. But my courtesy I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. Boo! All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is the pub. I would stay that way, perhaps even drown if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy. And don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a water cash on the counter after having too much whiskey counts as tipping. Why are you asking? He dirty. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck? Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. It's only amusement in G's face. The Asian guy, he looks and starts to look ticked off as hell. I want to hear his ringtone again. Don't worry, Holmes. She's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... Uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her, I don't know, suspect? See, you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much, and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo! Still right here, fellas! Five feet eleven! Can't miss me! <laughs> Unlike Shorty over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. That's an insult to injury, I moved directly behind him and used the top of his head as an armrest. When he shakes me off, I pop in the seat right next to him. Nice. Don't try me. You can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are you? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Giant. Been like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne McCullough. I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhymes. <laughs> anyway, you does guys it? are talking about that weenie does look it? right, right? That doesn't sound like it does or at something. all. something. <laughs> Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you, even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. You wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking, not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. Fair. How dare that sleazy wanker treat me like I'm a piece of furniture? And by wanker, you mean Luke Wright. Yes, Luke Wright. I just said that it's Kultona Kranze completely different from his pretty wife and Annie Han Hannah Anna I wouldn't be surprised if he's doing something dirty behind her back even bought him a mansion lucky bastard so it was the wife who bought the place are you going to repeat everything I say? Yes, it was the pretty one. The one with the long hair. 
She bought the place, sort of. With how drunk you are, I don't even know if you're aware or sure of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Excuse mm -hmm. you! I am at least 350,000% sure that I know what I am saying. I am a professional. I'm totally sure of what I'm saying. Do you think just because I'm drunk I don't remember facts? I remember everything. I remember every little thing as if it only happened yesterday. I bet you don't remember young, young McGurn's full name. Of course you don't. Here we go. John, William, pure mad, mental into your body, Simpson, Clay, Gimmel, Chip, the Bam, Rib, Racker, no real, young rebel, your best saint, John McGurn. See? I have a photo... photographic memory. Or read... <laughs> memory. <laughs> I don't remember which is which. Back to the wanker. Nothing off about him or anything? Nothing shady that sets the alarm bells in your head? She's taking a nap. Yep. Aside from being a sleazy piece of shit, he did get all in a tizzy whenever something about security came up. Makes sense. I don't blame the guy. Place that big, you'll need a couple dozen people stationed around if you want to make sure nobody you don't want gets in. And the guy seems like the type that doesn't like too many people. Oh, but he does like the ladies. I don't think his mommy hugged him enough or anything. These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This'll be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The way of despair that comes over both of them is bobbable. If feelings had a taste, it'd be bitter than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking, though, thank you doesn't get me far with the uh, you know too much shape in my system. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something. As ocht de! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is. Rotten bloke. Rotten bloke. Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Yay. Before I get another word out, there's hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. Who can slap his hands away the best I can instead of the foul stuff you must your hands off me, pipsqueak. I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair. But it's just like I said. Are you sure you aren't brain damaged or deaf? Santos girl from BRC showed us this creepy letter. You know, just like those spam stuff you get in your emails. And we thought it was some <coughs> joke or that the girl was just a bit too green to handle a big sale like that. You should have seen the look on their faces when they saw it. Whiskey, that's Luke fucking right, you get me. And the missus didn't look too happy either. I should have taken a picture and posted it everywhere. When rich snobs give you that face, no wonder the Santos girl went all mental on us. Working with them does that, you know? I think I'm about to. I'm not mental yet, am I? Anyway, just like I said, in that man... Hey, you okay? <laughs> Holmes? You're looking a bit shaky yourself there. He really is pale. Paler than before, at least. 
You can see the gears turning in his head on overtime. Suddenly he shoves a card in my hand. Not his name on it, his name, Ashton Frey, and his number. But he has second thoughts as he grabs it from me and slips it into my pocket. <laughs> you're cute, pretty boy. But I prefer blondies. Well, you're not exactly my type either, lady. But listen to me. If something comes up, don't do anything rash. If you think you're in danger or if you see anything suspicious, call me and the authorities as soon as possible. You understand me? That's 99... I know what the damn emergency number is. Right, 999. Good. 999! Nine, nine, anyway, nine. I have to run. See you, G. Yeah, it's quick on his feet. Already up and at him. As soon as the numbers leave his lips. Watching these maneuvers of the crowd of the pub goers is enough to tire me out. Where is 999 the emergency number for? The UK emergency number. Okay. Fast as he can, he's at the door and throws a smile. That's all we get before he's gone. Right, Just like that. Drink, boy. I'll go put it on your tab then. Ah, <sighs> fuck. Holmes boy always like that, G. Uh, pretty much. But what about you? I suppose I'll put your drinks on your tab, too. Don't want you to spill your wallets when you look like you're close to spilling yourself. Yeah, and if it's fine by you, I think I'll go take a bit of a cat nap here. Just for a sec or two. Uh, go right ahead. I'll wake you when I close up shop. Mumbling a sleepy thanks, I doze off on the spot, face pressed on the counter. I already enjoyed the pain I'll have for sleeping in such a position. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh, Marianne! How long have you been standing there, dearie? Oh, it's, the, it's the weird frame thing. Come again. join us, Marianne. We won't bite. Unless you ask, that is. So weird. It's like so many dead pixels. Not that I can go to sleep to begin with. Do people even have a feeling when they're working on something they really enjoy, but still, it eventually tires them out? Because honestly, I've been feeling like this. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Where are we in the timeline? That's when we saw Ghost Girl. That's when we met Ash. Oh, this is when Luke was drinking absinthe. Okay. Slowly piecing together like multiple years work of things. Because I don't remember. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the Wright Mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. We're only about halfway done, but the honest satisfaction on the client's face is enough for me to push through. Let's face it, between my exasperated exasperation of Mr. Wright's antics and her, I've been burning the candle at both ends. Can't even close my eyes without seeing a dead girl's face. Dead girl. Dead. She's dead. I have to keep reminding myself that. I shouldn't waste so much time on someone who's supposedly gone. There should be no need to bother myself with the dead. Too bad the living are usually as complicated, if not more than ghosts of the but past. don't you have a party? Mm, yes. 
But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. Mm. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems, and he's just trying to cheer him up. Even more complicated when the living in question is a pair of rich and famous socialites way past their honeymoon phase. Where are we on the tree? Oh, wow, we still got a long way to go. Cool. They've been married for a long time, and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. This but sounds familiar. Never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. Oh yeah, this is about Rochelle um, and Luke got accused of bothering her unborn baby. So they're talking about that. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you, Mr. Wright, isn't it? This is not Friday. Where is it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. Confusion. But if the troubled husband with a neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Got him. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. Why she thinks a single woman like me would be the best source of relationship with the ice is beyond me. Still, talk and answer to the best of her my abilities. I'm realizing I'm already pouring out a part of me that I thought was long gone. I had to believe my words would be some help to Miss Wright. If I'm honest, though, it helped to me. Like, some of the weight's been taken off my shoulders. Right. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party. Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat, maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees at least. If More it wasn't for business. them, I'd never even heard of you. Maybe it's about time we'll I change see. that. So if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Okay. Because believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. No, I shouldn't dwindle on the dead. I shouldn't just callously forget about them too. Saying that I've worked left to do is an easy enough excuse to make. I know how other people see me. They see me so obsessed with her craft that she would uh, so easily miss things like a party for it. That's like the part where people hurry about here and there in preparation for the Wright's grand housewarming party. None spare me glances that slip past them, each working on their appointed roles, and not daring to slack off while they work for what is probably the most powerful couple in Luxborn. I get in the kitchen with ease, the wine cellar being my final destination. But when is a great task ever simple? Probably never. This is probably the greatest task, isn't it? The greatest one that is worthy of being called a quest. Not acting as Marianne McCullough, the professional interior designer, when I chose to lie about being too busy for the party. Marianne McCullough, a lawful, neutral cleric with nine points of wisdom and eight in charisma. Just think about it. Like, that makes me feel cheesy, but it helps the fear. Helps me overcome the insane thought that I'm actively seeking out. No. We're not going into the cellar. Who would have thought that the gatekeeper to my final quest would be someone I thought would be a valuable... Snell! Ally. Hurry up, you snails! We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time! Butler comes to the cellar and into the kitchen, tailed by a couple of others. People I assume who are most likely chefs and bartenders. There's a brow seeing me just standing there by the hatch. By the trap door, it almost like he's going to throw me out for me in the kitchen without permission. The emotions for the others to disperse and familiarize themselves with the surroundings. Meanwhile, as he stands there... 
Continue to stand there, preventing entry into the door. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last minute things, yes? Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. He gives me... The look he's giving me is almost chilling. If life was a game book, he'd probably be the true neutral warlock guarding the treasure room. Difficult opponent to beat with nine points of wisdom and eight disparity. Well, I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So, just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. Both the Bratwurst and Hannah want this to be perfect. It would be a disservice let me and leave. disrespect to tow out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. Senator intervention almost turns me away. Maybe the Senator not meant to seek Lorraine out. But... Please, I just uh, lost something the last time I was down there. It's really important. There was another line. There was another line! Although everything leads to the same thing. So, it's probably not great. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst would be furious if he thinks anyone is touching his precious vine without his permission. Thank you. This seriously means a lot. He steps aside begrudgingly. We're gonna die. At this point, there's no turning back. Seller greets me ominously as I descend. This face feels smaller, with a lot more bottles lining the wall compared to before. And knowing what might be waiting for me here, that makes things worse. I almost hope, in a morbid and twisted sense, the learning would just be standing there, waiting for me. It would be just like her to talk about the inappropriate meeting in a dark, secluded area. Just like the broken bottles and wine that was spilling on the ground before, no trace of her can be found. Lorraine! Where are you, Lorraine? I... I miss you, you know? Only silence. It's when anyone wants to find something, that's the time when you can't. The thought that I wouldn't be able to see Lorraine one last time fills me with such despair. Sure, it was crazy coming here willingly in the first place, but... No, I'm looking for some closure. And if I can't see her, the least I can do is offer a prayer. Root tears and kneel in the middle of the dark, dark damp wine cellar and put my hands together. May God grant her eternal rest and... <laughs> her laughter fills the air. It rings along the walls until it echoes in my head, and like a siren song, it draws me to. before it comes to a stop upon reaching a dead end. What Ooh! Hell? Could it be an adventure then? Oh, the secret go passage. Look. This is the most interesting thing you've done by far. Secret entrance, though the idea of itself is inane. Only makes this entire endeavor more perilous. I need to find a way to open it. Already I'm running my hands along the wall in order to find some sort of hidden switch. It didn't give when I tried to push it before, and I doubt that it would have changed anytime soon. But there's a door, there has to be a way to open it. Hopefully without the need to break a it shame down. shame I can't roll for perception checks in real life. Such a nerd. It's such a silly thing to say out loud, though there's no amusement on my face, and I do take... Uh, check, glancing at the mirror for the Though a sanity check would be more fitting right now, wouldn't it? Probably. I mean, how long have I been down here searching for the switch of a hidden door? In order to find a dead girl, no less. It is unreasonable, it's insane. At this point, they find me clawing at the walls, using my nails to try and see if there's any grooves or catches I might have missed. I'm surprised to have gone past the ten minutes it was given to me, and I'm not being hauled out of here. I don't want to beg the chance that I have more time, although I know it's, ugh, I really shouldn't let these kinds of things bother me right now. Uh, if I don't continue looking, there's no point in me going down here. Dirts and rocks stick underneath my fingernails in search, but there. Section of the wall about the size of my palm, just as well hidden as the howl wall, is the switch, or a button, rather. Face it, Tigress. You've just hit the jackpot. The excitement I feel at the discovery finds me pressing it without a second thought. 
But when I click echoes in the cellar, the hidden door creaks open. I stop. Uh, no. We're not, we're not going in. We're going to die. It seems so cliche like a death trap from an old horror movie. Might very well be a dead end down there. Hopefully, not literally. Though I have no reason to fear for my life, it's hard to think I will be in any way safe if I continue in there. The thought makes me a chill run down my spine, yet nothing is paralyzing me is what I hear next. It's distinct and alien, and enough to make me look nervous at what I might see there. Behind me, I don't see. Lorraine! There it is. You're here! I thought I would never see you again! You can't even question how in God's name is this possible. We're gonna die. Seeing her there fills me with such a stain, a strange feeling of relief. I told myself I was ready to move on. Yeah, like, let's look at the branchy tree. There's no way we're not dead. Oh, there was a choice back here? What? What? Uh... Yet here I am. Ready and willing to embrace her back again with open arms. Her beautiful blonde hair, her soft lips with silk or with skin so fair and swaying hips. <laughs> she laughs, and the smile she sends my way as she walks over makes my chest feel tight. But her eyes are the most beautiful I'm of all. I'm so sorry. I must look like a right mess. I just it's been so long. I'm here, Em. I'm here now, don't you worry. Come here. It takes everything not to tear up at the side of her. We're gonna die. She reaches out and slips her fingers through mine before pulling me away from the tunnel and towards the mirror. Our reflection, a grown woman and a teenager, barely past her prime, lends a bizarre light to the whole scene. I can't imagine how you've been so alone all these years. I left you, Lorraine. I didn't mean to, but that's what I did. I don't even know if you can ever forgive me. <laughs> I... Don't cry. It doesn't suit your pretty face. Besides, I don't have to be alone anymore, do I? You're here for me, aren't you? You'll never leave me again, will you? My mouth goes dry as she looks at me. That isn't the plan. This is enclosure. Yet her hand in mine makes me believe that this is real. She's real, and that's all that matters, nothing else. Yes, of course. I wouldn't dare. Ah! You swear you won't leave me? I swear to God, I won't, Lorraine. Oh my God. But her smile remains, I can only describe her expression as sad. She walks around and she stands just behind me and wraps her arms around my waist. I nearly crumble with how I am in her arms once more. She puts her chin on the crook of my neck. I feel her hot breath on my neck. I'm filled with joy and grief. So the chocolate, almond, honey, and beer surrounds me. My first taste of love. The love that I denied. It had been so God's not the only one you're making promises to, Marianne. Swear it to me. Or, even better, prove it to me. I'll stay forever with you, Lorraine. I swear it to you. How do I even prove it to you? Simple. She pressed something in my hand. Large glass shard from a wine bottle, cold and sharp. Me. Uh, she's suggesting Dive that I... Lorraine! Th that's... A... How can I? How can I even do such There's a thing? There's no need to be scared. I'll be here for you until the end, Marianne. Even if you hadn't done the same for me. But that's the only way I can forgive you. The only way we can be together again. She guides my hands. My own hands are weak, as is my will, and I can barely—I can only bear my neck to do as what she wishes. There's no reason, no self-preservation, as I mindlessly welcome my own death, as it will lead me to my salvation. I feel nothing at first, other than the glass touching my skin, like a like caress, till the singing sensation blows from my neck. The pain sears and burns like nothing I've felt before. Every breath intensifies the feeling. Even if I want to cry on the scream, I can only cough as the slick metallic taste coats my tongue. The most I can do beyond that is rasp out calling for her name. Lorraine. 
Cold and weak, I grow worse by the second. I cough with each ragged breath, expelling the blood that I'm inhaling to the slit throat. Shush now. It'll be over soon. Oh my god. Really soon. There was a moment of doubt as I remember the devil was once the most beautiful angel in heaven. That I shouldn't be deceived by such beauty. A little late! But my final moments, all of that was soon forgotten. Yeah! My mouth twitches. I can't muster even the faintest of or the smallest of smiles anymore. But I'll be with Lorraine. Yeah, can I see that timeline change? Please? Um, seeing her again, however, made her decide to join her dead friend instead. I've unlocked a memory fragment. Rebecca. Bro, that's a great place for us to end it today. With a dead character. Huh. So how Mary Ann's wrote, by the way, it's only like 10%. I wish, like, had, if we would have gone in, do you think we would have died? Fuck. All right, Marianne. Yeah. All right, that's a lot of them. We'll be, we'll be back with more. You know how this works. It's, it's the game that never ends every year for us. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. It's been the same your life here. I hope you have a good one. Uh, my sick ass is going to go back to bed because uh, that's where I belong. I'll catch you guys next week. Hopefully feeling better. Finally. Fingers crossed. God, please. All right. See you then.